Is it okay if we start now so that we have time? Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, so based on the agenda, the first uh, speaker, the first paper is by Ibu Hetty Nur okay. Isnaini. Yes. Is it okay if we start, Ibu? Okay. All right. Um, so welcome, everyone. This is the Institution and Environmental Management Regular Session, which is in Room H. We have three papers this morning. The first one will be relationship between job autonomy and job performance through employee engagement in teleworker. Very interesting. By Hetty Nur Isnaini and Yanki Hartiyasti, both of Universitas Indonesia. So as previously, we uh, you have maximum 20 minutes to present but probably because we started late it would be better to keep it to 15 minutes if possible so Mas Guspikar will uh, set the timer to 15 minutes but um, of course feel free to uh, extend Nanti kita, we can cut the Q&A session, maybe more Q&A in the chat box rather than uh, oral yeah so Ibu Hesti uh, Hetty, sorry. Yeah. Um, silakan to present your paper. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot uh display my uh, present because host okay. disabled participant screen sharing. Um, would you please try again, Bu, Ibu Hetty? Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, we can see it now. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for good this morning. opportunity and thank you for the uh, committee and uh, Miss Lydia for uh, starting this session. Uh, let's introduce myself. My name is Hedy Noris Naini uh, from Faculty of Economics and Business. Today in here, I'll uh, present my paper about relationship between job autonomy and job performance through employee engagement worker, right? By Hetty Norris Naini and Yanki Hati Justin. For the first week, uh, discuss about uh, introduction. The COVID 19 pandemic has created a practically uh, challenging environment for human resource management. Also, this is a uh, make a big impact in human and then most of employee employee performance in every activity by telecommuting to get stability of production in organization but the telecommuting uh, we can know the as a work mode in which individuals most commonly allocate their work time between an office and home and then uh, by the O'Neill and their friend uh, stated that self-rated teleworker performance was more strongly connected with a need for autonomy. That is, uh, there is a can correlate between uh, teleworker and autonomy. So when they have a lot of uh, work from home or maybe uh, teleworker, their workers, so they have a lot of job autonomy. Ah, uh, uh, next, uh, teleworker research agenda in this uh, section, the particularly relevant is the potential influence of telework on employee exhaustion or engagement. And then uh, in either uh, research, uh, said that most of traditional workers at exhaustion and job engagement have been a lot of research topic but for the teleworker or telecommuting it's uh, just uh, so and instead the exploration of this study at teleworkers has been modeled uh, especially in the COVID pandemic then sorry yeah and then in this paper researcher will uh, 
investigate the potential partially impact of job autonomy, work engagement, and employee performance, and also exploring the mediating effect of uh, work engagement in the relationship between job autonomy and job performance, especially in this uh, issue in COVID-19 condition on a labor market in Indonesia. It, it is um, our research model. Our hypothesis one that stated the relationship between job autonomy and job performance are mediated by work engagement. Uh, this um, cited from uh, previous research that uh, several components that affect the performance of teleworkers, including job autonomy and work engagement. Uh, work engagement as a mediator in the relationship between a job autonomy and job performance. And also work engagement, it can mediate the relationship between autonomy and opportunity for development and weekly performance. Uh, it is cited from a Baker and Ball that uh, when the uh, person or human resource uh, get a uh, more job autonomy so the weekly performance are more high and then for hypothesis 1a that uh, several job design dimension uh, in especially in autonomy what's on make a higher impact level of engagement and also autonomy in there is positively associated with engagement and for the uh, hypothesis 1D, that uh, this is uh, in role and extra role performance, uh, especially in weekly work engagement, has found that the positively to weekly job performance. And then work engagement was positively, uh, positively uh, related to tax performance. And then for the last hypothesis that one C, uh, we can know that job autonomy and performance in teleworker has relationship and job autonomy uh, in, in this uh, Fred and Price research representative with job design can impact the work related outcomes as a job performance. Also, job autonomy was associated with significantly with job performance and work engagement. Our uh, methodolo methodology in our research, uh, data analysis with uh, static STSS with confirmatory analysis and highest process. And then the data collection using self-administrated online. Uh, the respondent must be minimum tenure uh, six months and the samples uh, all of our samples uh, 2082 employee from different organization in indonesia uh, and then for the measurement for the first is job autonomy job autonomy uh, from pro uh, can get a uh, comba alpha 0 0.8 and then work engagement with was 9 developed by Scowley, uh, 20, uh 2002 and then job performance uh, using uh, William and Anderson uh, all of uh, our variable is using um, scale 6 point scale uh, 1 1 until 6. Okay, uh, next for descriptive respondent. A majority in my uh, research, 53% uh, is woman, and then 61.7 uh, on bachelor degree. 30.9% is 26 until 30 years old, and then uh, a lot of uh, member is combination uh, work from home and work from office. Um, when we uh, see the condition, 
is uh, maybe PPKM one. Yeah, and then uh, WFH domiciled in Jakarta, majority domiciled in Jakarta. Yes. Uh, next in our uh, our result, uh, the work engagement has a partially mediating between job autonomy and job performance. It is a uh, have impact uh, in direct impact. Uh, zero point uh, eighteen, and also this is a uh, hypothesis. One is supported. Uh, work engagement can mediate the relationship between job autonomy and job performance. And then for hypothesis one a, uh, have supported also with coefficient uh, significant, and then. This is uh, our research model. That's uh, all of hypothesis one a and one c have a supported uh, correlation uh, from the number uh, result. For the discussion, the findings. Findings as a uh, conclude that work engagement partially mediated job autonomy and job performance relationship. Partially mediation was inferred because both of the direct effect and indirect effect of job autonomy and job performance. Uh, the support by uh, Alves, Scam, Trust, and Swan, and also Baker and Ball. And then hypothesis uh, one point uh, hypothesis 1A is predicted job autonomy has significant relationship with work engagement that supported, supported previous research by Hantopol, uh, Baker and Demirauti, and also Baker and Ball and Christian. Uh, there is have uh, supported and connectively between uh, job autonomy and then work engagement, also job autonomy and job performance. And then uh, for hypothesis 1B, predicted that work engagement has significant relationship with job performance that supported previous research by uh, Korkivki, Baker, and Scovelli. And and then the hypothesis uh, 1C is predicted that job autonomy has significant relationship with job performance that supported previous research, Fred and Chris. Uh, this can uh, discuss that job autonomy have a specifically uh, impact in job performance when, when uh, in industry or organization make a lot of job autonomy uh, in uh, WFH audition can make improve the job performance of uh, employee uh, but is uh, must condition uh, or conditioning with work engagement also our conclusion that uh, we can in investigate that between job autonomy and job performance have mediating uh, by work engagement. And then, so actually, uh, our conclusion, uh, work engagement can make more impact uh, in uh, increasing job performance. Then without uh, work uh, engagement, uh, also have correlated, but uh, cannot uh, make more impact when we don't have a work engagement and an employee. Uh, there is a future research for the next, maybe a, for a next research uh, to detail the methodology and also the result must be uh, inference, uh, dis more discussion and the analysis uh, can using um 
what is uh, not what session uh, maybe the what uh, like uh, with with uh, agenda agenda like uh, this, this research uh, start in August so September also research and then uh, October also research that is can make uh, impact more uh, viewing the impact of job autonomy and then work engagement also uh, increasing the job autonomy especially uh, job performance especially in teleworker okay the last uh, presentation thank you very much if uh, all of member in this parallel session have a, a discussion uh, a question uh, so we discussed together. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu Hetty. That's a great. Uh, that's a great presentation and especially relevant um, now that after, uh, during the pandemic we have to work from home. And I think beyond the pandemic, uh, some of this trend of working from home will continue. Personally, this is of interest to me because probably I am one of very few people who have worked from home since 2004. So I am a full teleworker, yeah. Um, so from uh, before uh, I give my comments, feel free everyone, if you would like to give a comment, use the raise hand feature, you can click raise hand and then um, I will call on people who would like to ask question. Um, or give comments on methodology and findings and other uh, issues, or you can write it in the chat box. Um, I'm sure everyone already know the procedure. From my, from my own perspective, I think this is a great uh, study. It would be great if we can also see the questions that you ask um, the respondents. What are the variables that you measure um, uh, you had mentioned several variables that respondents asked to rate. Um, it would be great for us to see uh, the descriptive statistics, for example, for those measurements, um, what, what were measured, and also a little bit more on if you ask this question about the sectors that they work, maybe that would be of interest to me. What sectors mm -hmm. are they working and what functions, for example? Um, because some some companies say that no cannot work from home, yeah, uh, especially finance and treasury and some like that. But um, in reality, there are actually people who can do that from home. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me see if there are any raised hands. Not yet. So if you would like to respond to my comments, feel free, Ibu Hetty. Okay. Uh, thank you for this question, Miss Lydia. Uh, it's very a uh, good question. For um, my uh, research, I, I will uh, show again. That's the the uh, specific uh, variable using uh, job autonomy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Yeah. Job autonomy, uh, we have uh, three items to ask uh, for the respondent. For the first, uh, work the condition and then uh, schedule. Also, uh, the, um, the uh, job autonomy three work. Uh, uh, I, I think the flexible for the schedule and flexible for the condition and then flexible for the delegation. It, it is uh, developed by Bro. Does this uh, acts like um, uh, what uh, uh, give the point one until six, the uh, autonomy you get in the uh, in the organization, especially in scheduling the work uh, the working to uh, finishing the work and then uh, the second uh, like uh, give a number uh, the automate uh, autonomy for your delegation when you uh, solve the problem from 
the leader and then for the uh, work engagement uh, like um uh, uh i will say as uh, say in indonesia like uh, sorry uh, like um apakah kamu bersemangat untuk mengerjakan pekerjaan di hari ini uh, like this one Uh, what okay. the engage uh, the person who uh, working in the in the morning? Uh, apakah kamu sangat bersemangat? Apakah kamu sangat berenergi like this one to ask the work engagement? And then for the work performance, uh, we uh, we uh, ask the what is uh, uh, how differences your job performance? Three months before the work from home and uh, three months after work from home, like this. Uh, and then, uh, what is a uh, weekend comparable? What's your uh, job performance? Uh, and then your your friends' performance. Uh, uh, like uh, if your job performance are the best one, then your uh, Then your friends, uh, it is conclude that your job performance is high, like this one for the job performance, and then uh, for the like a uh, question in our research, and then for the uh, sector job sector or maybe uh, the industrial sector, a uh, majority uh, from education, uh, we can know that. Uh, education the first and the most uh, of uh, organization can flexible or maybe can manage uh, their their organization uh, so flexible with the work for work from home or maybe flex flexible working hour where just just educate uh, the student or maybe educate the client uh, in uh, in uh, social media or maybe in teleconference like this that so um in my uh, research more uh, or the most of uh, sector from education i think uh it is thank you ibu that answers my question and um this is an ongoing research and i think you mentioned you will be doing another uh, study to yeah. see the trend. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you for um, any other questions? If if not, I will close this session, but feel free if you still have uh, questions or comments um, for Ibu Hati and the team, feel free to write it in the chat box. So um, let's move on to the next paper. This paper is by Ashari Priyadi, Pak Ashari Priyadi, and um, Pak Yanki Har, is it Pak or Bu? Yes. Yanki Hartiyasti. All right, sorry. Uh, you, both from Universitas Indonesia, and the title is the role of intrinsic motivation in mediating paternalistic leadership and organizational citizenship behavior. So, Azhari, feel free, as usual, maximum 20 minutes. Okay. Okay, I will share my screen first. Okay. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for this remarkable opportunity for me uh, for representing my paper. Uh, firstly, thank you to Ibu Lydia who led this session. Uh, I would like to present my paper with the title is The Role of Intrinsic Motivation and Mediating Paternalistic Leadership and Organizational Citizenship Behavior, or we will call OCB later on. Yes, as we know that uh, nowadays, universities are operating the their university or their business in the global, complex and dynamic and highly competitive environment. It is required the university 
to should have the element with support competitive advantage so that they can compete in the uh, education environment. Now, uh, a qualified lectures is an important factor for the quality of education and the university as well, because uh, the lectures can create the competitive competitive position of university among the academic community. So the role of the lecturer is very important in every university. Now, according on the uh, statistical, statistical data of Kemendikbud uh, Republic Indonesia, uh, Indonesia has more than 4,000 universities with more than 34,000 program and uh, almost 300,000 lecturers. However, only 5.34% program with has international standard. And based on the US world ranking, only uh, four university in Indonesia who has uh, ranked big 500 and only two, which is uh, UGM and uh, UI who uh, has top 300 in world ranking. Okay, organizational citizen behavior or OCB, we call it, is the one of important factor for organizational effectiveness and the whole organizational uh, performance, uh, especially in educational, international context by the AFSAR uh, to uh, 2014. Some study found that uh, OCB was influenced by intrinsic motivation. So intrinsic motivation can help uh, employee will increase their OCB that will benefit for their institution as well. Whereas intrinsic motivation will remain fostered by various leadership style through leader who promote integrity. So by previous uh, studies, there is a different uh, leadership style that will increase the intrinsic motivation and OCB as well. There are uh, ethical leadership, transformational or transitional. In this research, I would like to address the leadership style in paternalistic leadership. So the research question and the research uh, purpose is one to examine the raw intrinsic motivation as the mediating variable between paternalistic leadership and increasing lecturers or CB. Uh, this is the model I propose for this research. Now, this uh, study extends the previous research by Samer and Ethan who uh, examined the mediating role of interest motivation between ethical leadership and lecture uh, OCB. Therefore, I would like to develop the, uh, the dimension of the leadership style with the paternalistic leadership, which uh, include the ethical or molar leadership. Paternalistic uh, most likely to determine, determine effective leadership style in Indonesia. There is some uh, research found that this is the uh, leadership style that effective, uh, effective uh, use in Indonesian uh, institution. And it has four dimension, like benevolence, like leaders should have concern with the, to their follower, morale, like the leaders should show the moral attitude, authoritarian that leader with strong discipline and the visible and leader should uh, visible and be a figurehead a role model for the for their uh, follower it it is uh, conclude that this style is the effective leadership in indonesia therefore i propose the uh, hypothesis one is intrinsic motivation mediates the relationship between paternalistic and OCB and the sub hypothesis uh, with the paternalistic leadership is positively related to OCB. Now, 
uh, unit analysis is uh, all the lecturers from both public and private university with at least one year work experience. It is why one year? Because we uh, with the one year experience, I hope that they can uh, share and give the op uh, opinion about the uh, leader and the uh, institution as well. Data analysis using confirmatory factor analysis for uh, validity and reliability and has process micro uh, using SPSS for the mediating uh, testing. Data collection with online questionnaire with uh, Google form with the sample is 240, uh, 214 lectures with no name to reduce the bias. This is the measurement for the paternalistic leadership. Uh, we use Irawanto, MC, and Quet with 36 items. With one of the statement is my super my supervisor helps me to make my future career plan. The intrinsic motivation uh, we use uh, by Thierney uh, with five uh, items. Uh, the sample is uh, I enjoy finding solution to complex problems. And the OCB, uh, we use William Anderson by uh, which consists of 14 items. Uh, one of the item is I help others who have been absent. All the measurement use a six point scale from uh, strongly disagree to the st strongly agree with Kronbach uh, uh, Alpha score between 0 0.76 and 0 0.91. It means that all uh, the instrument is reliable. This is the responding characteristic. Uh, a female dominates the respondent by 63%. Uh, ages uh, coming from the group of 31st until 35, followed by uh, 46 and until uh, 50 and 36 until 40 respective, respectively. Uh, the tenors, uh, the work experience is uh, six until ten uh, experience, so they have uh, more experience in the institution. I hope that they can give the uh, statement uh, uh, great. Uh, education is mostly uh, have the master degree with uh, followed by the doctoral degree and few uh, bachelor degree for the new uh, lecturers. Now, by the leader characteristic, we see that also female that who now lead in the study program or faculty in uh, university by 55.8%. Education uh, uh, is almost balanced between uh, bachelor and doctor. And the position is uh, head of program mostly and uh, followed by the dean and others. Others means in the head of a department and some, uh, some are vice of rectors and rectors. This is the, the highest tenure is six to 10 years old and above 20 uh, years work experiences and ages uh, coming from the group 46 until 50 years old for the leader. Uh, this is the result. Uh, we use the highest process to uh, analyze the mediation analysis. Uh, we can see that the, uh, the first line is the airline from the paternalistic form intrinsic motivation is highly significant with coefficient 0 0.39 and the second line B line is intrinsic motivation by to liter uh, lecture OCB highly highly significant with 0 0.76 coefficient and the C accent is the uh, mean of the uh, mediation is intrinsic motivation 
by 0.14 coefficient. Therefore, it means that intrinsic motivation is partially mediating between paternalistic leadership and OCB, which means that paternalistic leadership can uh, influence the lecture OCB directly or indirectly through the intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation will help paternalistic leadership uh, to increase the le uh, lecturer to increase their OCB. So for the uh, hypothesis one, we uh, support, uh, support hypothesis one while intrinsic motivation mediates the relationship between paternalistic leadership and OCB. And the sub hypothesis one uh, uh, supported that paternalistic leadership is positively related to OCB. Uh, this is uh, the discussion. The intrinsic motivation uh, is uh, partially mediating uh, between paternal and lecture OCB, it's indicating that paternalistic leadership could have influence their lecture willingness to engage in OCB by increasing intrinsic motivation of their lectures. So uh, the university should uh, uh, pay concern in lecture, uh, lecture in, uh, motivation so that they can uh, increase the, their uh, OCB. Mm. These findings support some previous research that intrinsic motivates mediate the relationship between leadership and OCB. Regarding to the further analysis relationship of the paternalistic leadership dimensions, the study concludes that visible leadership is the most positively significant to lecture OCB through by intrinsic motivation. It indicates that the leader should be visible and act as figurehead or as a good role model by the follower. Therefore, lecture will improve their OCB. This research was slightly different to the previous study, which found that moral leadership, which is a leader who showed the good moral attitude and Benevolent, the leader who show the uh, careness, pay attention to the lecturer, who will in three, uh, who do most significant to le to lecture to increase their uh, OCB. Uh, as predicted, uh, authoritarian leadership was found have negatively significant relationship to intrinsic motivation that will reduce their lecture OCB. This study confirmed the previous study also. That means that lecturer will demonstrate their high level or OCB by the role of interest motivation if their leader or their supervisor had less absolute control. Next, the conclusion uh, we made here, there is two uh, conclusion that intrinsic motivation mediate partially relationship between paternalistic and lecture OCB and the second paternalistic leadership is positively relationship on lecture OCB with visible leadership is the most significant dimension. Now we have uh, two contribution according to this research. The first is by knowing the, the this finding the institution can improve a paternalistic style by empowering and respecting their lectures. Lectures should be given an opportunity to contribute uh, to the decision-making process. So uh, the, lecture, uh, the lecture will feel involved and uh, will increase their engagement in OCB. The second is uh, in, in enhancing lecture interactive motivation is by involving them in creating new ideas and new guidelines as well as engage them in analytical thinking. So uh, institutions should uh, 
so invite the teachers more in uh, creating the procedures and the ideas and the guidelines on curriculum for the for increasing their intrinsic motivation and OCD. Uh, the future research is uh, uh, I since the study focus on private university and mostly mostly in Jakarta therefore future research could extend its focus on public university uh, in Indonesia or other countries to investigate and to strengthen the generally generally stability of this paper or it will uh, it will resolve the different finding or the same finding so the future research it can use in the in the public sector or or the other countries or using a different uh, variable uh, thank you for your attention and uh, if there's any question or open opinion i will welcoming all of it thank you thank you pa azari great presentation yeah. Uh, very much related to our first paper. Um, again, I invite everyone here, if you would like to comment or give a question, please use the raise hand function or write it in the chat box. So I'm checking, no questions yet, but while we wait, maybe also my um, comment is similar with the comments in the first paper. It would be great to see what are the exact items being measured and also some of your conclusions may be related to the items measured like for example um, fostering creativity and so is this one creativity for example is this one uh, of the variables being measured in the in the survey uh, yes the creativity is part of the ocb uh is the yeah uh, the part of cb there is uh, two dimension or ocb ocbe and ocbo so uh, in the individual that uh, lecture will increase their ocb uh, or their creativity so creativity it means that creativity analytical thinking is uh, uh, in uh, one of the part of the ocb Okay, yeah, um, for probably for uh, management, I'm not I'm not very uh, well informed about management, but I think for practical reasons, sometimes uh, managers or institutions would like to see uh, directly what are the items that they can improve on because they cannot improve on everything. For example, 36 um variables oh, right. probably is very hard to improve but yeah. what are the variables that uh, contribute most to uh for example motivation and so yeah. on uh, another okay. comment from me would be um uh so there is no discussion of private universities and public no not private but is there really a distinction between those who lecturers who work in the private sector versus public sector? I mean, this this kind of discussion um, probably can enrich your uh, study. Oh. For example, you mentioned um, it's mostly respondents are mostly private sector, but why is that a concern? Is there a difference, for example, that previous studies have shown between public and private and so on? That would be okay. um, my my input. So, um, would anyone like to co comment or write your chat box while we wait? Uh, if Pak Hasari would like to respond, yeah, I would like to uh, respond that the the variable that the most uh, significant is the uh, feasible uh, leadership. That it means that uh, as the Indonesian by the previous research also, the Indonesian we know that of a leader it must be exists must be sound so it will help the employee or the lecturer will uh, increase their motivation in working and also will uh, in, uh, in increase the level of 
or CB. So the uh, the visible it not mean that uh, not mean the leader must uh, be in the office all the time. It means that the leader uh, giving the figurehead or role model. They shown that if you have the good leader, you have to have the good uh, uh, good research, good uh, uh, in the community as the curriculum or, or etc. The the, the leader has to show the the good side of being a lecturer. So the lecturer can uh, following the the act of the leaders and the why uh, the it the limitation by the only private but because the the majority of the respondent is come from the uh, private university therefore i encourage by the future research to uh, if the if uh, study only on the uh, public university is it will uh, having a different uh, different finding or not because the mostly okay. respondent is uh, from private university but the were there the any previous experience from other research that show a difference in uh, motivation or leadership between private or if not university maybe private versus public institution uh, from the previous uh, profession previous uh, research there is i become the uh, the what the what the the mother of research that i uh, reference reference the research is the uh, research that uh, in iraq in iraq public university uh, in iraq public university that uh, intrinsic motivation fully fully mediated leadership in OCB uh, in my in my result that uh, interest motivation is partially mediating in the uh, with the first year's research there is a shown that the uh, intrinsic motivation fully uh, mediated uh, leadership and OCB in the public uh, university in Iraq Okay, so um, because we're nearing the end of time for the second paper, um, I will close this session with thanks to the presenter. But Thank feel you. free if you would still like to raise, uh, to give comments or raise questions to write it in the chat box um, and the presenters can read it and answer in the chat box. So let's move on to the third paper, which is by Bunga Hidayati from Universitas Negeri Malang with co-authors. I understand the one presenting will be Ibu Bunga. Yes, thank you, Ms. Kedia. The paper, and the paper is Smart Environment Model, SEM, Flood Environmental Management and Flood Resilience in Malang City, East Java. So Ibu Bunga, silakan. We have about oh, we have um, 20 minutes as usual, maximum for paper presentation. Thank you, Miss Lydia, for the opportunity. Yeah, we can see the slide. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it was fine before we can see your, your slide. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Bunga Hidayati. 
Today, I would like to uh, present about my paper. The title is the Smart Environment Model, Flood Environmental Management and Flood Resilience in Malang City, East Java. In this presentation, I would like to uh, five topics. The first is introductions, and the second theoretical framework, and the third is research methodology, and the fourth is result and discussion, and the last is conclusions. The introductions, uh, we know that the natural hazard, like flooding, is uh, globally natural hazard causing the widespread life, property loss, and economic damage, especially in Indonesia and also in Malang City. So the function of the smart environment is the reality in the, our society and the number of the smart devices integrated into this the space is overgrowing. So the smart environment help to the problem of the floodings. My purpose of the my paper is especially about smart environment model to explore the significant smart human, smart people, especially in human capital and smart learning environments to the management of flooding and resilient, resilience of the fraud. The theoretical of the frameworks, uh, the component of the smart environments, there is three categories. The first is adaptability. And the second is system capacity, and the third is ability. The function of the adaptability for the flooding problems, uh, the adaptability derived from the increase of the knowledge, which is a result of the learning of the people, and also to accumulation and testing of the knowledge to learning of smart people, especially in human capital. And in the system capacity, the community that currently lack flood resilience need transformability. For the basically, the transform flood management and other system, especially smart people, smart environment, and ecological, ecological evaluation to promote flood resilience. And the last of the ability based on Sorensen at all 2016, uh, flood resilience, the ability to anticipate and also adapt to and reorganize and learn from flood. And the flood resilience is the ability to adapt to and recover from the hazard and the ability to tolerate flooding or to quickly organize after the flood disaster. So based on the theoretical frameworks, uh, I mix to the methodology using the quantitative methodology with independent sample to test to analyze different pattern of the flood experience in Malang City. So there is two uh, different area uh, that I choose to the samples and also uh, the unit analysis, I use the multinomial logistic relations to evaluate causal model in smart environments model. Uh, the two different area, the first is a uh, Glintung area, is a uh, um, good management of flooding. And then the second area is Sukun, is bad management. So every year, uh, has uh, floodings in this area. The descriptive of the variables, uh, the uh, dependent variables, it, the first is flood management. There is uh, five alternatives uh, like linked. Uh, the low number is one and the high score is five. And the independent variables uh, there is uh, education and also social learnings and learning opportunity, information, social capital, policy barriers, flood regime, flood impact, and location. This is based, this 
this variable, that indicator of the uh, variable of the smart environment, smart people, and uh, evaluations, ecological evaluations. And then the second variable of the dependent variables is it is fluid resilience. That is a uh, four category: low fluid resilience, medium fluid resilience, high fluid resilience, and very high fluid resilience. And also uh, have far uh, external indicator that uh, mitigation, preparation, test one, and recovery. This is uh, one of the example for the Glintung area. This is a famous area, so uh, you can uh, search in YouTube with the keywords Glintung Go Green. So there's so many video can explain the um, Glintung's, uh, how the recovery of the area from the uh, floating area until the go green. From the indicator, I make a model about the smart environments based on the many variables. Uh, the smart people uh, have three indicator to uh, create the smart people, education, social learning, and learning opportunity. And in the smart learning environments, have four indicator, inform, uh, sorry, three indicator, information and resource ability, social capital, policy barriers. And the third indicator of ecological evaluations is flood regime and flood impact. Based on three categories, smart people, smart learning, and ecological evaluations, uh have to connect it to the fluid environment management the first and the second is the fluid resilience and the third how the um connected our collaboration about the fluid environment management to the fluid resilience especially in the fruit and environment management have four indicator and also in fruit resilience have, has four indicator. The result and discussions, uh, I have three results. The first results explain the multinomial logistic regression for fluid environment management. And the second results, uh, multinomial logistic regression for fluid resilience. And the third, uh, the correlations. Factors in fluid environment management and fluid resilience. Okay, based on the result of the statistics, uh, I using SPSS also to um, evaluate the analysis of the variable. The result of the T-square ratio test had a value of the 70.370 with the significance. This indicating a good model fits of the model to explain of the uh, dependent variable. And also the acceptable value were also obtained for the R square using Coats and Snell 0 0.891 and Nickel Curve 0 0.952. So this is a, a hike of the R square. It is a result of the multinomial logistic of the management fluid based on the indicator of the education, social learning, learning opportunity, information, social capital, policy barriers, fluid regime, fluid impact, and locations. Uh, there is three indicator that not significant to the fluid management. There is social learning, learning opportunity, and fluid regime. Uh, maybe the reasons uh, of the uh, 
uh, many debate in the literature concerns uh, the relative importance of the various contextual factor in influencing the process and the outcomes of social learnings. Uh, when what is the different process? So maybe the different outcomes also. And also the learning opportunity is the concern the ease of the sharing fruit relate knowledge within the community. So it's we can be promoted by other psychological distance or moral trust. So in this area have a conflict about the trust. So this is might be the learning opportunity not significant in this result. And then the third about uh, fruit regimes refers to the frequency, variety, and magnitude, timing, duration, rate of change of loading. Uh, the reason of the fruit regime is not significant. Maybe uh, about the questions uh, uh, not specifically about the duration and variety frequency. So maybe for the future research, I concerns to uh, to specially specific specifically about the questionnaire about the for its every variable. The other factors have significance uh, to the fluid management fluid environment management, like education, information, fluid impacts, uh, policy varies, social capital, and location. Location has uh, two categories, uh, the better of the, the good of the fluid management, and the second one is the bad of the fluid management. The second results about the uh, fluid resilience. Based on the results, the significance, uh, the variable of response and recovery has not significant to the fruit resilience. Uh, for the information for the response refers to emergence measure to avoid for the fruit loss when a fluid disaster occurs. And recovery refers to measure in the aftermath of the fluid disaster to restore social and economic activities. And the uh, recovery refers to measurement in the aftermath of the flood disaster to restore social and economic activities. And the uh, third uh, results about the correlation of the variable in flood and variable management to the flood resilience. As for uh, results, the first is correlation about the mitigation with flood ability. Uh, the number of the significant 0 0.709 and the correlation, the variable preparation with recovery. And the third uh, about the variable response, variable with recovery and flood ability. And the last, about the adaptability with transformability. Okay, for the last sections about the conclusions. Uh, the first is the smart environment model serves as a framework to system, systematically understand the learning from different food experience, especially in smart people and smart environment, and also ecological evaluation pathway. Uh, based on the SEM model, have factor that are smart people, like a human capital, smart learning environment, and ecological path, which is, has a significant impact on fruit environment management. And the other hand, the external factor, including mitigation and preparation, have significant in fruit resilience. Uh, the last is the linking fruit environment management to nature for resilience in the face of the climate change. So uh, the climate change is one of the factor, uh, the flooding's impact uh, nowadays uh, in also in developed country like uh, Japan also 
like uh, occur of the floodings. So uh, the topics uh, for the future of the research may be to correlate about the climate change. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the attention. That's all of the my presentations. If you are any questions, uh, please. Thank you, Ibu Buma. Thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting to me to hear about the smart environment model. Um, I invite again everyone who would like to give comment or ask question to write it in the chat box or better is to use the raise hand feature and ask the question directly. So right now I don't see any raised hand. So while we wait, uh, maybe I have a few comments on the paper. Um, first is probably uh, for me personally, at least, it would have been interesting to hear about these areas, the study area, which is I think Glintung and is it Sukun? And yes. what are they? Is it like what level? Is it uh, municipality level or sub area? And how are they different or how, how are they the same? You know, uh, maybe pictures about the floods um, in these two areas. So give a background for people to understand the setting of your, uh, of your study. Um, the second one, I think uh, there is very minimal information about who your respondents were, are they residents and what, you know, just descriptive uh, information about who they are and um, how did you collect data and so on. Uh, one other aspect is sometimes, um, you know, we don't know which comes first. Is it the residents already with uh, with good understanding or good social uh, capital and so on? That's why they can respond to when flood happen or the other way around because they're always uh, getting so getting flood year after year. They build the social capital, so that's why it's. I think it's important to listen to the story first about the area um, so that we can understand the context better um, uh, of the, the situation when you were doing the, the research. So uh, I think that's, that's the comments from me. Um, if anyone would like to give comments or ask questions, feel free to write in the chat box or to use the raise hand feature. So while we wait, silakan Ibu Bunga, if you would like to respond to my comments. Yes, thank you very much for uh, for the question. Yes, I have, uh, I choose the two sample, sample area. Uh, also the two environments are characteristic are by contrasting level also. Uh, the Klintung area uh, is a good uh, management, but uh, this is by process. But in in 2018, this area, Klintung area, is also flooding, flooding area. But in 2020, 2020 this area is a change to uh, like many planes and also using the biopoly for the ground in the in the soil so uh, this area have a many chains of the management uh, first, uh, first of all of the chains uh, about the chief of the rukun warga rw uh, chief uh, that is make a uh, like um, decision if the if the people to make a letter like a sign of the uh, chief of the rukun warga atau pak rw uh, so the requirement for the chief of the rukun warga the people have to uh, have plan in their home Yes, and the second area is a uh, Sukun village. 
this uh, bad management uh, every year uh, there is a flooding occurs in this area so i interest to a uh, compare of the two location of the area to how to management and also uh, social capital education in uh, people in this area like this and uh, the second one, second one uh, about the social capital, right? Uh, about who were the respondents? Uh, the more about the methodology of your survey. Okay. The respondents and how did they respond to the survey and so on? Okay. Yes, I have uh, uh, using the questions uh, for example the social capital maybe how the uh, people trust of the governments and mm -hmm. trust of the uh, especially in uh safe of the rukun warga or how to the people trust of the uh mm -hmm. environment people in this area like this so the respondents were people who live in that area. Yes. Is it random? Random or a random? Yes, random. Okay. But uh, the collection, the location is proposed. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments for Ibu Bunga? I see here Ibu Alin. Aku todong ya, because she has done a survey in Jakarta on flood um in jakarta area i think north jakarta if ibu alin would like to give comments uh ibu bunga have you uh shared the result of this survey to the to the re respondents or to the managers kepala rt rw at the study area yes also any comments from input or comments from 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 them yes uh he have comment to maybe the the variable of the significant can improve to the area and especially in the bed area bed management area to uh, make uh this is a role model of the glintung area to make change of the that area like this yeah sometimes policy makers don't like to hear that their yes. management yes, style yes. is <laughs> not good yes <laughs> all right so um if there are no more questions i think i will close this session with thanks to uh all the paper presenters and all the papers good luck with your further research if you are thinking of publishing the papers hopefully um, the comments were um, helpful and look forward to uh, the publications so thank you well done i will see you later in various uh, sessions of for the rest of the conference enjoy the rest of the conference